Hi, and welcome to video two in the series about the basics on MicroStation Connect Edition. My name is Sam Hendrick, and I'm from Bentley Systems. In this video, we're going to talk about how do we open an existing file. And once we get in, what about the interface? What do we need to pay attention to? We're going to discuss the workflow and how that affects the ribbon. And then we're going to talk about something that I'm passionate about. It's the tool settings window, very important. And then we'll discuss the status bar, and then we'll talk about the copy element tool, give a short demo on how to do that. And then we'll do the backstage, what's back there? And then we'll do our plus one. So let's go ahead and get started, jump into the file. In this video, we're going to continue in the file called MicroStation Basics. So I'm going to go ahead and open that by left clicking. And the purpose of this video is to take you for a quick tour of the interface. Just touch on the basics. In the upper left hand corner, we're going to have what's called the workflow. So if I'm going to click on where it says drawing, you're going to see there's three possible choices. Drawing in task navigation will appear out of the box. Learning Connect is part of our training workspaces. So you probably won't have that installed at your work. So I'm going to go ahead and click on drawing. When you choose the workflow, it determines which tabs appear. In this case, my tab home is the active tab, but I've got other ones like view, annotate, attach, and analyze, and so on. Right now, home is my active tab. Underneath that, I have my attributes. This is where I can set my active level, color, style, or weight. I also have primary. In this group, I can open up reference file dialog box, raster manager, level display, models, and things like that. I also have selection. I have placement. In placement, there's a group of tools, anything from play smart line all the way to play cell. Then I have manipulate. Under manipulate, I've got my basics, move, copy, rotate, also have copy, parallel, array, other tools like that. Then we have modify, where we can modify an element, break an element, trim multiple elements. We also have delete. And then the last one is called groups. This is where we can chain elements together, creating a complex chain, or we can chain to create a complex shape, other tools like that. That's just the basics on the ribbon. Now to look at something that's really important. It's the tool settings window. On my screen, the tool settings window is right here. My active tool is called element selection. Whenever you select a tool or make active a tool, the tool settings window will show you the name of the tool and the settings that are set for that tool at the moment. Right now, element selection is my active tool. I'm going to change my tool to play smart line. So I'm going to go to my placement group, click play smart line. Tool settings window reflects, it says play smart line, shows me the active settings for right now. My segment type, my vertex type, things like that. Now, once you've selected the tool, check the tool settings window. The next thing you want to do is look at your status bar. This is in the lower left corner of your screen. It'll tell you the name of the tool you're in, again, confirmation, a greater than symbol, and then it'll prompt you for what to do next. In my case, it says enter first vertex. So I'll do that by doing a data, which is a left click. The prompt changes to enter next vertex or reset, which is the right button to complete. So I'm going to place another vertex by doing a second data, left click, and now I'm done and I'm going to complete by doing reset, right click. When you do a reset or right click, that does not exit the command. It just puts me back to the beginning of the command. So for most commands, reset doesn't exit the command. It just takes you back one step. In this case, I'm back to enter first vertex. So I don't have to reselect or reinitiate the tool. So that's the basics of the interface there. So now we're going to look at how do we use something like the copy element tool? So I'm going to show you another way to get to the copy element because I just touched on under the manipulate group, we have copy element right there. I'm going to show you a shortcut. On my keyboard, I'm going to tap the space bar. At my cursor will appear what we call the pop-up menu. Now there's three rows. The first row, these icons will open up a secondary dialog allowing me to choose things like dialogs, element selection, placement, just like we had up above. The second row are discrete tools. So I have element selection, move, there's my copy tool. And the third row, like the first one, will open up a secondary group of dialogues. So there's my copy element. So to get to copy element or any one of these tools on the second row, spacebar, a little bit of movement on your mouse, and you've got it. So I'm going to click on copy. My tool settings window changes to reflect the tool I'm in, copy element, and the options change. So my settings are copies and use fence. Now I don't have a fence, so that's grayed out. And I'm only planning on making one copy of a group of elements. Now the group of elements that I plan to copy are these three elements right down here. Now I could pick them one at a time. That wouldn't be very efficient. 
So I'm going to show you how I can select multiple elements at one time. Now, if you're an AutoCAD user making the transition over to MicroStation, this method will seem very familiar. I'm going to start by moving my cursor about here, holding the left button down on my mouse, and then I'm going to drag from left to right. What you're going to see appear, again, I'm holding the left button down. I'm going to see a rectangle. The rectangle is a solid line. That means inside. If I move my cursor to the other direction, you'll see it change to a dash line. That means overlap. Now, if you've already started your selection window and you really want to be in overlap and I don't want to be in solid, instead of having to restart the process and start in a different location, I can toggle between the two. Nice little shortcut here. On my keyboard, I tap the shift key. That will toggle me between the inside and overlap mode. And now with it in overlap, I'm going to release the pressure on the left button. That selects my elements. Now it's looking for me to pick a point to copy from. And I'm going to copy from the midpoint of this section right here. I'm going to do a data, left click. And then I'm going to place the copy over here to the left. Same physical spot, data. Now it's allowing me to make additional copies. If I wanted to make additional copies, I can just continue. Or if I'm done and I want to go back to the beginning of the command, I'll press reset, the right button on my mouse. And that takes me back to the beginning of the command. So that's just some basics on the interface and a couple of tools there. Now, the next thing I want to show you is something about the back office. There are dialogues or settings that you may need to change, not on a frequent basis, but something like preferences in MicroStation. In order to get to the preferences dialog, I'm going to go to the file tab across the top. This will take me to the backstage. This should be familiar with most people who use Word or Excel. I'm going to slide down here to settings. Under settings, I have user, system, file, configuration. What I'm interested in is under settings for user. And then down here, I have preferences. So I'm going to go ahead and left click. This opens my preferences dialog. Now, this isn't a dialog that you have to go to probably 100 times a day, but you may want to be able to get to it quicker than having to go to the backstage and go to settings, go to user, go to preferences. So I'm going to show you a quick way to get to this. So I'm going to cancel this dialog. To return back to my drawing, get out of the backstage, I can either click on the circle with the arrow in the upper left-hand corner, or on my keyboard, I can hit escape. That takes me back. Now, the shortcut method I'm going to show you is involving customizing MicroStation, in this case, the Quick Access Toolbar. So I'm going to come up here, and where I have my Quick Access Toolbar, where I can get to things like File Open, or I can get to Save and Undo and Redo, there's a little button at the end it says Customize Quick Access Toolbar. I'm going to click on that, slide on down to Customize Quick Access Toolbar. This opens up my Customize Ribbon dialog. Now this is customizing my personal .dgn lib. I have two choices, ribbon or in this case, quick access toolbar. In the middle are my choices. On the right is what I currently have available. So what I want to do is add preferences to my list. So I'm going to click in the middle column to make it active. On my keyboard, I'm going to hit the letter P. It will then jump down to the P's. It's alphabetically sorted. I'm going to scroll on down till I find preferences. Now you may see two, either one, doesn't matter, they're the same. I can select it and I can click add or I can just drag and drop it over, finding a place to put it. I'm gonna put it just past the compress one. Then I click the apply button. Now the change has been made. I'm gonna close this dialog. And if we come back up here to our quick access toolbar, you're going to see preferences is added. So that's a nice way to add to your quick access toolbar. You can add pretty much anything you want up there to be able to get to it quickly. The thing that makes the most sense are the items on the backstage that you don't want to have to waste time getting to them. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you and stay tuned for the third video in the series. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.